Uh, if you will turn to your Bibles to the book of Colossians. You know, Pastor, I had called the other day and I didn't get the phone call. <coughs> it was late when I got it, so I said I'll call him tomorrow. And when I called him, I didn't know what was going on. And he told me about everything, how they got together and everything, kind of like they had a discussion here at the church. And uh, I was like, okay, all right. You know, that's what I'm talking about right there. I was, <coughs> I was having to run away slave right there. I was, <laughs> so I was, I was like, <laughs> free indeed. I'm running that now. I said, this is good. I said, he said, well, you know what? Brother, he said, when you bring the word, I said, okay. I didn't have nothing down because, you know, I, I, you know, everything was shut down. So I didn't bring nothing. So I'm like, okay. I said, well, I don't. I said, I'm going to, since I committed, I said, you got to give me a word, God. You do. So I said, he said, as a little bit after that passed, mm -hmm. I was thinking going through the house. And bing! Got hit right upside the head. I said, for real? That's the one, God? I said, I mean, this was just right after the phone call yesterday. You know, I like to kind of get prepared and stuff. But when God give you a word right then and there on the spot, get it. Mm -hmm. right. so, there, so the title of this sermon is... Uh, I'll tell you in a minute. We'll go to Colossians. After we get to read here, and I'll, I'll go. Starting at verse 7. After we are standing and reading the God's Word. Not of me, but because of Him that made and created everything. 2 in verse 7, it says, That in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong one. Stay right there, Colossians. Stay right there. Yeah. We were there. That's fast. Verse 7 says, Rooted and built up in him and established in the what? Faith. Faith. As ye have been taught. Abounding therein with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It says, going. To, we're going to skip into verse 12. It says, buried with him. And every time you read him, he's talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In baptism. Wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead. And verse 13 says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespass. That's enough to shout about right there. Forgiving you all <laughs> Trespass. Let me say it one more time. Forgiving you all trespasses. Oh my God. Because some of us, we hold trespasses in our head that we done done this stuff. And God said, I forgave you already. <laughs> I got it written right here. All. Oh. Even the one you're trying to hold on to and say, no, not that one, God. I know I got to earn something. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Now, 14 is in. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Which was contrary to us and took it out all out of the way. How did he take it out of the way? Nailing it to his cross. And 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Brother Fernando, could you pray before we go forward? Right, right here. The title of this sermon is After Everything That Went On, that was this last week, and all that's been happening right now. This was the title of the sermon that I got up out of this here. And it is The Show Must Go On. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Now, I ain't talking about that this is some type of show from the movie theaters or a show that we looking at on TV or a show that's in our DVD or DVR or whatever we call it nowadays. But the show must go on. If that show is out of this verse in verse 15, right here where it says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. The definition of the word show means he made, that is when he took everything to the cross and he nailed it. And this show right here must go on that we in right now. Whatever the enemy come against you, you need to let him know that the show must go on. <laughs> Don't say it's fitting to go on. You say it must go on because the definition of show means when he did this to Satan on the cross and all that came against him and us is that it made him a specimen as shown an example to exhibit. An ex exhibition. The cross is an exhibition of the enemy up under our feet. Mentally, physically, emotionally, and everythingly. <laughs> Put everythingly. We just make a new word up in there. But yeah, that's what it means. It says that. So the enemy, so guess what? That same cross, the Bible says, take up your cross and follow him. Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. Guess what? That's showing him, you breaking that back, making that same spectacle and making him an exhibit that he is defeated in the name of Jesus, by faith. Because every last one of us, even pastor, got a show because he ain't gone nowhere and we still live and we still got a show that must go on. Because we got to show the enemy that he is a liar. Right, amen. <laughs> and through our personal lives and by believing by faith. He said, now faith is a substance of things that are hoped for. Keep hoping. Keep expecting whatever the enemy said because there's a show that must go on in your personal life. Just like the show here is going on today. Amen. We ain't supposed to be here preaching today. Hallelujah, you was declared, but God said, no, the show must go on. <laughs> I know you might not know where everything is coming from. I know it might not make sense to you. Still don't make sense for a man to lay his life down upon the cross and get skin alive and get nails put in his feet and for everybody to reject him. And he still said, guess what? The show must go on. When the enemy had took a third, when the devil took a third of the angels out of heaven and got them booted out there, God didn't just sit down. He said, what? The show must go on. Amen. That's right, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. This show got to go on. Mm -hmm. And remember, our show was to show the devil. He's a liar. And he ain't a winner. And we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Going back to verse 7. But the thing about this, how we keep the show rolling. Because guess what? In this show that we own, our names are the little Jesus is up under that. And we got the win. We got the credits under the under the thing. The credits go to us because we are trying to be willing and trying to be obedient. And this is being rooted and built up in him. So if I'm being built it up and rooted in him, everything that's not rooted in him got to go. Everything my baby prayed over Phoebe, my wife right there the other day, and she said, and everything that's bothering you, it got to go in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. And I don't think she even knew how prophetic that prayer was. But the Bible says that out of the mouth of babes is perfected praise. That's why the enemy don't want you to raise your kids and grandkids and baby and grand baby grandkids up in church. Because why? There go these right there. If I keep the kids out of church, because perfected praise comes out of their mouth. <laughs> That's why he don't want you. And they don't even know it. Just being used and operated by faith. So let's try to keep the kids out of church. Keep the man, y'all need to get them grandbabies. Bring them great grandbabies to church so they can get that perfected praise because you're only young once, they say, but we're going to do it for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because a show must go on. Hallelujah. So right here it says, established in what? The faith. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with what? Thanksgiving. Book of Philippians said, let your prayer request be made known unto man. Let your prayer request be made known unto God. It said, with all prayer, supplication means petitioning to the Lord and with thanksgiving. Jesus gave thanksgiving 
even when the people was hungry before he broke bread at communion. He gave thanksgiving when he fed the 5,000. He gave a thanksgiving praise even before the miracle came. He was already thinking, the Bible says he was slain before the foundations of the earth. So before he even came down to earth, administered himself through the natural conception of man to come through here, he had already gave thanks for it being done already before he walked on this earth. He thanked it because he knew he was going to walk through it. He had a made up mind that he was going to get his mission accomplished. So that's why we should be able to be saying, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because when we say thank you, Jesus, we say, God, when we say there's a comma, we don't want to put a period there, but we want to leave a comma there because the show, what's going on? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Because this is your show, God. It's not mine. And we're going to show the enemy the triumph that you've done over him. Man, I don't know about y'all, but I am excited. Because if God saying the show must go on, it must be some Grammy Award women performances that's about to drop in his lap. <laughs> it must go on be some exciting endings that's about to conquer, that's about to be manifested and made forward by faith. It must be about to happen. Hallelujah. So right here, verse 12, it said, buried with him in baptism. When you're baptized under Christ, you're buried with him. Your sins is up under the water with him. But you got to, even though with all that sacrifice of that, you still have to be willing and obedient to what he says. Because there's a lot of baptism going down, a, wet, a, devil, a dry devil is coming up, a wet devil. <laughs> coming up causing more hell because why? I have not been regenerated yet. But I have to consider myself being buried with him. When Jesus came up out the tomb, he was not the same body that went into the tomb. He came out in a glorified body. He went into the tomb as one of the worst bodies that ever been in a tomb. Tore up, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, there was no man scarred and marred up as worse as him. As the one of the worst bodies that went into the tomb and came out one of the best bodies that came out of the tomb. <laughs> That's the kind of God we serve. So any tomb situations that look dead, <laughs> God can dress you up and make you look real good while everybody preparing a potato salad and everything. God and already got. I'm preparing you for a wedding feast. I'm gonna renew my vows with you because <laughs> you mine. While everybody wants to look for a funeral, I'm preparing a wedding renewal vow ceremony. Yeah, even the ones with your crazy kids and your crazy uncles and everybody, I'm preparing all that while everybody count you out because greater is he that is in you and he that is in this world. Amen. Even my thought life. God said, though a man were dead, yet shall he live. When I think it's not going to live, when I don't think it's livable, God can make it live. He's spoken to them bones in the book of Ezekiel and he said, watch them bones come together. <laughs> Them bones came together. And then he said, then I'm going to call flesh upon them. And flesh came around them. Oh, but it looked like a dead situation first. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Been through some dead situations, some bad reports from the doctor, some bad reports from the teacher, some bad reports in your head, even how kids is acting right now, or people acting right now towards you. But God's saying, I got you covered. Hallelujah. Because I can make them dead bones live. <laughs> My God. And this is not just preaching right here. This is prophetically speaking right here. God, God is a God. Who, who said it said that? The pastor said to give you life more abundantly. God is about life. He ain't about death. And you stick with him. I guarantee you this walk you will not bore you to death. I promise you. <laughs> It's exciting every moment. And some of the excitement is not good. I heard one pastor say, God sometimes got a sense of humor that ain't even funny sometimes. <laughs> but it'll make it interesting. <laughs> My God. So right here he says, Wherein also ye are risen with him through faith. 
through the faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh. That means when you were in a dead situation, in a dead relationship. And you know, y'all been in dead relationships and then they say, you know, God and messed around and put somebody in your life and made it all worth it, make you wish you hadn't even gave yourself, even gave that joker a kiss a long time ago because it was just a waste of time. And God, now he gave you something to say, oh, Lord, yeah. <laughs> He said, have he quickened, and the word quickened means made alive, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. That's good to know. Already forgiven. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I bet you everybody in here probably knows somebody that prayer could go, man, they don't know what they do. Goodness gracious alive that they just knew what they was doing. But they'll tell you they know what they're doing. But they don't know what operation of spirit that they're coming out of. But they don't really know what they're doing. Because if they was in Christ, they'd be doing the right thing. They wouldn't be doing the wrong thing. So they're doing something. Yeah, they're right, but they're not in the right spirit. Just like he told those two about calling fire down from heaven. Jesus said, wait a minute, you don't know what spirit that you're in. And it's up to our walk. To show them. I don't know about y'all, but right now in my walk, I'm having to walk as patiently as I ever have in my entire 43 years on this earth, I think. Because see, I'm a man who used to move and get the job done. If you wanted something done, if you want me to hit him, if you wanted me to tear up some stuff, if you want me, I'm going to go get him. But now, the older I get, God is saying, I need you to be patient. Because how can you stand still and see the Lord, see the salvation of the Lord running? Or always on the go. So it's not that we being old or God saying, okay, you old. Because this is a bunch, let me tell you something, it's a bunch of old cats out there that if they really want to go off and act a fool, they can do it. <laughs> it ain't that they, they ain't that, don't get the gray hairs mixed up. They're just trying to use wisdom. And not be a go get a lucky rabbit thing. They try to use wisdom and the Lord to say, slow down and depend on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Because I know if I wait on him, uh -huh. the outcome is going to turn into a Romans 8 28. Mm -hmm. And when we know that all things working together for good to them that love God and that are the called according to his purpose. One of the things that you know what? One of the things the enemy wants us to do, what God wants us to show us is that I got this thing already taken care of. I don't care what kind of plans is coming against you. I don't care if the landlord trying to kick you out your house. I don't care if your car is broke down. I got it taken care of. I'm making you live at times when you want to be suicidal and want to kill yourself. And you don't think I got these situations taken care of? But I'm asking you to be patient and rest in me. And the only way you're going to rest in him is fighting off your thought life. Yeah. Don't let the enemy wear your mind out with one thing, things that ain't even happened yet. <laughs> we bring them to pass by dwelling on them in our mind mm -hmm. thinking about them consistently George Meyer put out a book and he said the battlefield is in the mind boot that stuff out your mind and allow Jesus to reboot you <laughs> put a new program in your mind a new download because when he put a download in you, baby, let me tell you something. You hold on to him. I don't care what kind of virus is coming. You got that God McAfee virus, uh, uh, antiviral thing inside. You got to kill every virus that come your way that's trying to bring you down in your mind. When you got Jesus, when you put his program in, it always it already comes with an antiviral program. <laughs> 
physically, spiritually, mentally, psychologically, emotionally. Yeah. And especially the thoughts that you think about yourself that are negative. Them the killer ones because that is what causes depression. Depression, the definition of depression is what I think about myself. If I think negative consistently, that stuff is going to draw off of power consistently through my body. Where do you think stress comes from? Stress is not a situation on the outside. A stress is a situation that may be on the outside that I take in. <laughs> because Jesus said it right there. He said, in, in Isaiah 26 and 3, he said that I will keep thee in perfect peace. Let me repeat that. I will keep you in perfect peace. I'm looking, looking at it in this world. I'm like, like, what did he say? Maybe you need to repeat that again. Maybe he misquoted the scripture. No. In perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me. You want perfect peace? Where is your mind? Is it going? Is it coming? Or is it on Jesus? Can't be on adultery and fighting and fussing and arguing and thinking bad about myself. It got to be on Jesus because he's in me. Jesus didn't think bad about himself, did he? He said, and now if he is in me, he telling me I got the power not to think bad about myself, even for my past mistakes. Because in the scripture right here, he says, having I-N-G, a suffix meaning that it's continually forgiven. You all trespasses. Oh, get this in your spirit. Because we want to stomp the devil and let him know that the show must go on. So right here it says in verse 14, it says, Blotting out the handwritten ordinances that was against us. Which was contrary to us. Talking about the law. And took it out of the way. Now, some people will try to argue with you with this right here. And they'll tell you, well, <laughs> Jesus said, uh, he didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. Yes, he did come to fulfill it. Remember, he took the old. And he is the fulfillment. And we are walking fulfillments of the law of love and righteousness. Because of the blood sacrifice, that is the reason that we can walk in that. So no, he said he, take, he took away the condemnation of the law. That's why some of these kids is living that shouldn't even be living. And some of us are living that shouldn't have lived being in a rebellious state. That's why we live living now. To proclaim his righteousness and his love. He said and took it out, all the nailing it to the cross. So if anybody try to bring up a any type of Jewish holiday where well, you're not too Jewish because you ain't celebrating Yom Kippur or you're not celebrating uh, Hanukkah or Hanukkah or all these uh, different Feast of Tabernacles, God has put all of that. He is that because why? He said he is the Lord of the Sabbath. So guess what that means? We are walking Sabbath. Every day we walk is, walk is a holy day. <laughs> because of him that's in us. See, the Bible, a lot of people don't know this because the Bible says my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. Because knowledge brings forth fruit. Fruit brings forth discipleship and disciples. Pastor, like Pastor always said, I'm not trying to raise no fans. A fan, do this is what you do with a fan. And people that are fans in Christ do just like this. They can't stand still. They want to hear the favorite song that come on. And then so-and-so not preaching today, he don't sound right. They just up and down, just like this. Just fanning. And pretty soon they get so tired because they're doing it out of work. And they'll drop the whole thing together. Already looking at it for an excuse to leave Jesus and leave church. And wait for that little icing on the cake to happen. Ding, ding. That did it. Bam.
That's why God not looking for fans. He looking for disciples. Those are people that want to follow Jesus. That you know come heck, hell, and high water. I'm going to follow Jesus. Because you know what? In my personal life with Christ, there is a show inside of me that must go on. And I like that because the definition to the word must is this. Out of Mary Webster Dictionary. It says, be commanded or requested to, be urged to, ought by all means to be determined to be unreasonably or perversely compelled to, bound to. Who? It's this must. Remember the must, it must go on. It's a different way of saying, I wonder if it's going, but my must go on. I must pray for my kids. I must pray that God, God pray for my enemies. I must uh, 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 just pray at all times without ceasing. I must keep my pastor lifted up in prayer. I must come to church on Sunday. I must get, get in my word and pray, even if I got to fast. I must, I must, I must, I must, I must. Yes, yes, Some of us got more muscle we want to watch Empire on. <laughs> Or why or, or must we have more must and want to listen to our music that ain't godly than our must be in Christ? Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Sacrifice. What is your must? Is your must more of Christ or is your must more of something else? It's two roads. Which one are we going now? Narrow is the way that leads to life. And broad is the way to destruction. And broad looks so much easier because that joker got a cake. It looked like a big old five-tier cake. Imagine getting a five-tier cake for your wedding. And just when as you cut into that joker, it ain't done. You done paid all that money for that cake. And that's the cost that we pay being out there in the world. Make it look like a nice dress, five layer tear, tear cake with the water fountain and everything, and the ducks on there doing this. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you cut it in that joker. It ain't nothing. Trick of the enemy. So now, you know what? I got to go the narrow way. I know I might be a size 38. <laughs> I might not have a narrow figure. But I think God made it narrow enough for me to get through. <laughs> long as I stay on course and keep keeping him as Lord and Savior and keep moving and pressing toward the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus and having that mind of Christ that is in him that also should be in me. He said, be a good, good he said, be of good cheer in John 16, 33. He said, for I have overcome the world and I live in you so you have the same power to overcome the world. Amen. Bills. Job situations. Government trying to push all kind of views that's against the Bible. I have the power. Some of us might have to lay our lives down to that, for that. Man, I'm ready. I heard an old man in the store the other day. He said, <laughs> he was talking to somebody, he said, and he was ordering something at Taco Bell, and he said, he said, man, are you, he said, he asked him, was he on the senior citizens club, 50 and over like that, he said, no, nah. he said, oh, he said, oh, so you 20, he was playing, he said, man, no, I wish I was 20 again, I said, let me tell you something, I don't know if you do, <laughs> I said, that's a good cliche, but do you see what's going on out here in these 20 years, he said, I never thought about that, you're right, <laughs> <laughs> only reason you want to be 20 again is you want to try to re help out some regrets that you made wish you could make some choices over again but that ain't happening <laughs> okay so now it says he took it out and check it out this is what, the, what God did verse 15 it said and having spoiled principalities what that means is that every plan that the enemy had against you personally in this world and against Christ he said he's having spoiled principalities or demonic uh, levels of demons 
that all are in hell because there's levels of demons in hell. There are imps, there are demons, there are spiritual wickedness in high places, and there, there's small little little gnat ones, and they got them big ones. You know what I'm saying? But I want the big ones to come my way. I don't care what he say. I want get. I want the big boys. You know what I'm saying? You tough guys. We want the big. One. We want. Let me get the big one. You know what I'm saying? If I try, you ought to be like, I want to get. I want the big one to come my way. I want Satan to know my name, and every time it come out of my mouth, I want him to be afraid. Like oh, that one. <laughs> Hmm. I don't want to say, say oh, see me? I got her. She ain't. That's what he's doing to a lot of Christians. A lot of folks that believe in Christ, he looking at them on the hit list in, the, in, the, in his hell boardroom when they be meeting up and saying, I ain't worried about that. That damn mine. He ain't mine. Ooh, not that one. We, I got to say the best for last on that right there. He's a fool. Yeah, he's a fool for Christ's sake. How, is, how do you think the enemy is looking at you and your intensity and your hunger and thirst for Christ? Is he looking at you like, oh, I ain't worried about him. Or is he looking at you like, he going to steal a lot of souls from me. <laughs> you want to be a threat to Satan. I know you don't hear that a lot of scriptures and a lot of TV preachers say it, but the devil is still real. He's alive. And he still hates you and hates me. And definitely hate that cross because after that cross, boy, that let him know, boy, that show is going on. <laughs> Y'all want to give God a hand praise right there? That show is going on. In your personal life, this show is still going on. In your son's life, in your unborn kids and great grandkids' life, that show must go on. And the only way that show got to go on is if you train a child in the way that he should go. When you train him in the way he should go, the show is going to go on. That's the legacy you leave behind. Is the show must go on. Amen. <laughs> I think after Saturday getting that phone call, prophetically speaking, this show going on. Amen. Amen. We're going to leave the how. The when, the where, the why, and the how. We're going to leave all those five major questions and cast those cares on the Lord. We're just going to believe you, Christ, at your word, and fall in line. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Spoil principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. Openly, you know, it's the difference when you get your butt whooped in private. <laughs> but to get your butt whooped openly, mm -hmm. to get your teeth knocked out of your mouth openly, <laughs> and everybody remember, man, he slapped your teeth out your mouth. Everybody was there when that happened. One day, picked up your teeth. <laughs> That is what Jesus did when he went to hell and took, snatched them keys from the enemy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that cross. That's one butt whooping that he ain't never, ever going to forget. And guess what? With us being as Christians, that's what God wants us to let our light shine so. Because it reminds our cross, remind him of that cross where he got stumped. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. So when you walk like Christ, you remind the enemy of that horrific butt whooping that he got on his own playground in hell. And I want to remind him every day, because I don't know about y'all, but he didn't gave me cause enough trouble in my life. I want to remind him. And you'll also be a reminder of him in Revelation chapter 20 of, of the lake of fire that he is to be condemned to as well. Christians are reminders. That's why he hates that. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to call this altar right now. Anybody up in here? That you might know somebody out there who kind of stuck in the middle. I don't know if I can make the show go on. 
I don't even know if my show going on. If you know your show is going on, or either with you personally, I don't know if the show going on. I'm kind of struggling right now at this here. You know, it's intermission right now in this thing, and I kind of want to back out and go home and just chill. But and you know deep down inside in the back of your mind, I can't chill. I got too much more to do. I know everybody else done backed out on me. I know it's, I'm, people don't think I'm the most beautifulest person. I'm the one that not people don't call in the family when it's time for gatherings. I gotta remind they got I gotta remind them, you know, just to put me to the side, set me like a fat boy at the prom, treat me just bad as all outdoors. But I still think I got worth in this thing. Can you anybody? Yeah, anybody know what I'm talking about? Just feel like an outcast. You done done all you come for these people, and they still. You still feel like a carpet getting walked on. And they don't even say it with their mouth, but you can see it in their eyes. Especially when it comes to your family. <laughs> so, anybody, and you and you trying your best to keep a smile. Like, mm, you have no idea. That Jesus saving me is saving you. <laughs> Jesus saving me is saving you. You got grace before you don't even know it. I got Christ. Oh, you know anybody out there that don't that that's in the middle, stuck in between the show? And the reason they stuck in between the show is because the money situations, relationships, pain, heartache hurt, what they think about themselves, don't think they're pretty enough, don't think they're worth enough, just feel like they're just after just wasting space and air when that's not what they're doing, lonely, depressed, oppressed, not impressed, come on up to the altar and pray for them, and pray for yourself, because guess what? With your show still going on, it's going to help them get they let them know that their show must go on as well. That's why we are all body. With Pastor Hurt, we all felt it. Because we example of the body working together. As a body. When Fernando Hurt, a mama Hurt, or my wife Hurt, I Hurt too. When my baby Hurt, you're going to hurt because we are the body of Christ. The altar's open. But I just want to make this prophetic decree to you. And that's your show must go on. And you might need to get rid of some people that don't want your show to go on. Sometimes you live with people that don't want your show to go on. Ask God to give you the strength to tune them out and let your show go on. Right, amen. The old man told me in jail, he said, long as breath in the body, that's hope. Hallelujah.